I've just been experimenting with making some custom heater pads and it's actually very easy and it seems to work quite well. And this is based on the little pads you often find in things like heated gloves from Chinese sellers. And this was a, something that I was making a sort of like a carbon fibre sandwiched membrane for other electrical experiments and then realised it'd be quite interesting to run a laminating pouch through as well with carbon fibre in it. So let me show you the process of making this. Now, a couple of options here. We're going to put some copper tape in and then we're going to put the carbon fibre tissue across it. This is available off eBay. It's used in modelling for making super tough things like wings for model aircraft. So it's quite useful as a source of material. Now, if I get a hole punch, and this is just an option, uh, you could also have the copper coming out the end, but if I get a hole punch, and I'll just do it at one end, I punch a little hole in, like this, and then I do one at the other end as well. The first one I did was in the middle, but I then realised that you don't really need to do it in the middle. You can do it really wherever you want. So uh, I've punched a couple of holes in this pouch. Now... I'm going to lay some copper tape. The copper tape is also available from eBay, although goodness knows what it's actually made of. I think it's copper. You just never know. It could be a coppery looking alloy. So how's that bit going to size? Uh, that looks all right. I shall cut a matching bit. Fumble, fumble, fumble. So the carbon fibre can be laid in in a multiple of ways. Uh, you could uh, make it so it's for a higher voltage or a lower voltage. In my case, I'm just going to make it for 5 volts because that is convenient. But I'll show you the other methods used for making it for higher voltage. It does have lots of options. You can customise the heater mat to your voltage and the heat you require within reason because you don't want it to get too hot because otherwise it's going to melt the pouch. You know, I think we might try that anyway and just see what happens. I shall melt a pouch just to see what happens when you exceed that temperature power rating. So I'm going to initially slide this in, just because it seems the easiest way to do it. Oh, maybe I won't. This isn't going well, is it? Fumble, fumble, fumble again. So I shall slide this in underneath that hole that I've put in there. Technically speaking, you could use non-self-adhesive tape. This is a self-adhesive copper tape. I'm putting that in squint. It's fine. That'll do. It's a prototype. Uh, but theoretically, you, you could use the non-adhesive one because one of the problems here is I'm going to actually be soldering through that little hole down there and it's got the adhesive layer and it just makes it a little bit harder to solder. That's why you could just bring the copper tape out the end or use non-adhesive copper tape or fold a bit in double if you've got the adhesive stuff just because it's easier to get this stuff like this with the, the tape with the adhesive on it. This is also proving quite hard to start if I didn't... Cut my fingernails down quite so much, it would be easier. Let's see if I can mess this up completely. There we go. So here's the other electrode. And I shall place this. I should zoom down this a little bit. Now, it doesn't really matter because uh, it's not a fine... There's no finesse involved in this project. So this time, because uh, I've got the hole here, I'm just going to put the tape over it like this because it's easier to reach than the other one was way off center that doesn't matter it is just a prototype now comes the carbon fiber this stuff comes in a roll and is a very thin tissue what you get may vary in the thickness this is quite odd material it cuts very easily so i'm going to need a bit i'll cut a whole strip it's very crisp feeling when you cut it it's very kind of brittle the point of carbon fibre is it becomes strong when it's laminated with resin. This would also make an interesting material for uh, ionisation. I shall put this back in its little sleeve. Rather annoyingly, I lost my other roll of this, uh, bought another one, and then Murphy's Law instantly found the other one, as soon as I'd ordered the other one. So let's uh, cut this down to size. Noting that carbon fibre is a uh, Notorious for very sharp little fibres. So let's, um, I've just stuck that onto the tape. Let's cut it like that. And then I shall put it in here. 
and lay it between the copper electrodes. This is a bit ham-fisted, but you know what? Treat this as a prototype. That looks all right. Okay, now I'm going to laminate it. Then we'll solder some wires on and we'll see what sort of uh, power it actually passes. Here is the laminator. I shall put it between the little non-stick pouch. Where is the non-stick pouch? There's the non-stick pouch. I've preheated the laminator. It is hot. And I shall put this in like this and feed it through. At this point, while it's feeding through, I could bring in the notepad and show you other options. If you wanted to double the resistance, well, more than double the resistance, you could put a bit of copper tape like that and then two bits of copper tape like this and you could lay a section of the carbon fibre across like that and one like that. So you'd end up with uh, two sections, two thinner sections, which would make it much suited to higher voltage. I shall feed this through again. Other options. Technically speaking, I suppose you could just cut and uh, put two bits of copper tape at one end. And you could actually just cut a sheet of carbon fibre with a suitable notch in the middle like that. And likewise, you could uh, have... Um, three stripes of the carbon fibre. You could really just... Uh, the thickness of the stripe will uh, lower the resistance and then you could have like a copper tab there, a link tab there, a link tab there and then a copper tab there for the connection. That would connect all three in series. Many, many options. You can customise this to your own requirement. You could make it A4 sized. Let's stuff it through again. It's no harm in, in multiple laminating it. Then I shall get these wires ready to put on. I shall put this little bit of fluffy carbon fibre out the way. It's very, very light and airborne. I wouldn't like to work with carbon fibre all the time. It's got extremely fine fibres that may pose a health hazard. Not the same way as asbestos, not the permanently stuck in your lungs type of thing, but still sharp carbon fibres that could cause damage. And breathing them in all the time could uh, lead to health problems. Right, let's get this out of the way and test our newly made thermal mat. Looking good. So now I'm going to try. Let's focus down onto there and zoom down now and brighten it up maybe. Yeah. So I've got these pads here with adhesive on them. I could try using a cotton bud and cleaning some of the adhesive off. I've never tried that. Let's do it right now. So I could get some isopropanol. This is probably going to be a terrible idea. Should do this uh, when I'm making a video about it without any rehearsal whatsoever. The answer is, yes, I should. That feels as though it's had an effect, that it may have actually cleaned the uh, adhesive off. Let's try it on the other side. That'd be good if it has, because uh, melting through the adhesive was actually a bit problematic before, particularly because the copper wants to take the heat away. The solder iron is hot. The solder is on standby. Where is the solder? I had the solder. I shall grab another bit of solder. I've misplaced that bit. Another bit of solder. And let's try flowing it onto here. Heating and get it to stick. There we go. Not too bad. I think I may have melted some of the, of the pouch away there, but it has... Heat it up to the point it's stuck. Excellent. And I'll tap these wires on. One there. Ooh, I think it melted right through the plastic. I have. It doesn't really matter. It's made the connection to the copper. That's what we want. The bulk of the connection is along the full run of the uh, copper strip anyway. And now I have a convenient 5 volt supply, and I shall write on it what I uh, get current-wise. So I'm sticking this connection on here, and this connection on here. It is now passing 390 
two milliamps. So where's a pen? 392 milliamps. It's wavering up and down a bit. Don't know if that uh, affects. No, it's, it seems fairly consistent. Uh, let's say 395 milliamps. 395 milliamps at five volts. And that means the power dissipation of this is calculator. Oh, what have I done with the calculator? There it is. The kink calculator. Uh, 5 volts times 395 milliamps, that's 0.395 amps, equals 1.9 watts. Let's say 2 watts for this strip. 2 watts. And right now, this is just getting mildly warm over its surface. It's quite nice, actually. It's just an ambient, very diffused temperature. Uh, hold on, just give me a second. I'll show you this with a thermal imaging camera. That seems the best idea. One moment, please. There it is. Uh, 37 degrees there and about 43 down there. So it's not, it's not perfectly even. I guess it just depends on the weave of the material. I suppose also you could, if the... Carbon fibre has a particular orientation of strands. In this case, it looks kind of diagonal. Could be wrong here. Or it just, it's more or less random. Uh, but you could orientate it towards, you know, the, the direction of the strands. Now, the last test to do here is to uh, overheat this deliberately. So, let's uh, zoom down this. I shall lift it up a little bit. And then we'll just... Bump the voltage up and the current. So now this is one amp at about 13 volts. So that's about 13 watts. What's going to happen here? It's getting hot, but not dramatically hot. Well, that would definitely start heating your cup of tea. I don't think it would boil the cup of tea. Uh, so that's about 13 watts being dissipated by this at the moment. I'm not sure what this would take. I don't see it actually softening or deforming in any way. Let's bump it up a little bit more. It's current regulating. It's up at 16 volts, 1.2. Let's bring the kink calculator in and calculate that. So that is... The current's wavering up and down. It's actually kind of going down now. Oh, I can see uh, moisture uh, coming out the fibre in there. And that's actually separating it. Okay, so this is it's settled down at 1 amp. Well, 16 volts, 1 amp. I don't need to calculate this. It's 16 watts. And it is starting to show signs of rippling. Oh, that is hot. That is very hot. Oh, it is getting soft now. I think I'd have to go higher voltage to get any decent effect on <laughs> higher voltage it is then. Uh, just one moment, please. I'm just going to change the set. No, no, I'll just pause momentarily. Uh, let's uh, turn this on. Uh, right, so let's go up to 20 volts. Uh, so that's 10 volts. 15 volts, current limiting, bear with me one moment, 20 volts, 1.3 amps, what's that power going to be, uh, 20 volts, 1.3, 1.37, uh, 20 volts times 1.37 equals 27 watts, oh, it's all shriveling up now, it's all shriveling up. It's going a bit soft and crinkly. Okay, increase the power. So 22 volts, it's starting to smell. 25 volts, uh, 1.4 amps. There's smoke me off it. Oh, the plastic's starting to... It's starting to smoke. And the plastic's starting to distort. This is where I should have my little fire extinguisher handy, isn't it? 
Very smoky. Yes, fire stop. Fire extinguisher on hand. Let's hold this in the corner. It's actually starting to delaminate here. Okay, 1.1, it's 26 watts at the moment. We're now up to 27 volts. That's the limit of that power supply at the moment. Um, so uh, it will self-destruct if you get high enough. And the current's dropping down now. At 27 volts, it's dropped down to one amp. So I'm guessing that's because the everything's kind of delaminating and it's breaking the circuit. But that concludes that test, I think. Uh, hold on, I'll just see what else can get here. One moment, please. Right, so let's uh, continue on. So the current has dropped off significantly, actually. But now I'm up to 26 volts. 28 volts. 29 volts at an amp, so it's 30 watts at the moment. There's the smoke again. This is good. Um, and this is the limit this time. That's uh, 36 volts. Plenty of smoke. Is it going to burst into flames? Oh, it's stinking. That's very, it smells like wax. I can see the plastic boiling down there. What's going to happen? And why is it all happening at one end? Is that where it's basically starting to break its connections? It's gone a bit sort of uh, black there. You know you just want to watch this and see if the whole lot burst into flames. What's going to happen? The current is dropping. I think it's gradually just fizzling out its little carbon fibre links. And it is delaminating completely uh, at that point. And stretching. It's gone very soft, it's gone into self-destruct mode. Oh, that has reduced the current dramatically. So, uh, no flames, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, boo, we wanted flames. But uh, that is it. Uh, these things are only really intended for about 5 volts or whatever. It depends, actually, on the, the length of carbon fibre. If you put a much higher length in, then you can go for a, a higher voltage too. But for these little, sort of like, security pass type laminated pouches, I would say the optimal uh, voltage, and just for a couple of watts, is 5 volts. Uh, but there we go. How to make your uh, combustible uh, customised heat pads or strips. You could customise this into just about anything you wanted. But quite useful. Useful to know that this can be done.